In this run fit video, part one, we're going to look at Georgia's 4-2-5 defense, talk a little bit about some positives and negatives of running the 4-2-5, maybe talk some technique, uh, maybe even throw a little bit of coverage stuff in there as well. So let's get started. All right, so before we dive into this play, let's talk a little bit about the 4-2-5. You have your four down linemen, your two inside backers, your two corners, your two high safeties, and then this is your nickel guy, uh, sometimes called the star. He's your kind of hybrid guy that's going to move about the field, um, kind of a very specialized position. Uh, and so much as it's not an outside backer, it's not a safety. Um, he typically is involved a little bit more in the pass than in the run. Um, one of the benefits of the 4-2-5 is you can uh, divorce your front from your from your coverage, meaning you can call one strength to you know to the run strength. So here in this pro set, our run strength is going to be to the left, meaning towards the tight end. That's where we think you know, especially with the back um, away, that's that's an easy call to the left. Um, however, the passing strength is different because you have a single wide receiver and you have two you know, twins on this side in the pro set. So your, your, your run strength is to the left, your pass strength is to the right. Therefore, the nickel needs to line up um, to that passing strength and he's divorced from your front. These guys can remain the same. So here you have the mic and the will. Um, so just something to consider when you look at 4-2-5 defenses. These guys are going to be kind of divorced from these guys. You'll see the nickel move around. Um, you can run into some issues, especially when you talk about you know, offenses that will fit with formation, meaning they'll put the passing strength um, of a formation into the boundary, um, and that leaves you kind of a, a loose edge because um, a lot of times what you get, you know, really a 4-2-5 is kind of bred out of the, the, the kind of mid-'80s when, when the spread kind of became – West Coast was kind of, you know, doing its thing. Spread became a little bit more popular, and so you wanted, you know, that extra nickel guy in more of the – kind of defend more of the passing situations. The problem is now you've kind of – essentially you can think about a 4-2-5 as a 4-3, except for your bump in your linebackers and your tuck in your wheel. And what that means is you're going to have that weak edge on this side. So if you think about it, if you put the twins into the boundary, now you put the nickel into the boundary, you condense the space, and now you have this open gap here because he's on the other side. So it can be an issue for 4-2-5 teams. But looking at this play – uh, this is going to be a pro set. Obviously, you're going to get uh, motion out of the Z receiver. Uh, he's going to come in jet motion. Uh, this is a counter, you know, counter trade play right here. Um, the one thing that it ends up being is essentially 21 personnel. So on the snap of the ball, essentially you have, um, you know, pro twins gun split. Um, and so now that's going to bump the safety over and have to cover for, uh, you know, the, the adding of the numbers here. And now you've got your corner kind of one-on-one -on -one with with your uh, tight end. The one thing you notice here is when you play a tight end set, you have to determine whether you're going to play an inside shade or an outside shade. And here Georgia plays an inside shade, uh, which sets up well for a counter trade because now what can happen is these guys can double team the three, work to the backside. Um, you know, we can kick out uh, kick out the the nose here, leave him on the backside. He should not be able to chase this down. And now we can kind of uh, – kind of collapse down and wash this this end down and now you're looking at um, blocking these two guys and the numbers are in your favor so that's what happens here they wash down that defensive end they chip up to the backside uh, which really here would would be the will and now you're you're basically two on two with your two pullers and and your two defensive guys because your safeties are on the top so your plus one is up top in the middle of the field so now you have a situation where um, the numbers are evened up, um, and somebody's got to make a play. So the, the way we kind of de defeat that defensively is we got to make a spill. So essentially what's happened now is we're adding gaps to the front side of the play. So now you have three new gaps that you have to account for, um, or you can spill it. So the way we spill things is we want to go ahead and, and, and go through the thigh board of the inside leg of the puller because we want to push everything to the outside. We want it to spill over the top, push it wide. We don't want to have people come under. So if you come and you what's called boxing him in, if you're just going to come and, and set this hard edge, you're giving an undercut right there. But if you spill it, you're taking away that undercut, and now he only has the, the availability to, to bounce to the outside, and you're giving guys the chance to, to, to chase it down. So when we spill, we can also – when the situation's right, if you spill the first guy, sometimes you can get two for one, and now – We've taken the numbers and switched them. Now here's our plus one now because we've taken a two for one. And now is our guy scraping over the top for the for the guy that's bouncing out. So 
uh, spilling kind of helps us as defensively kind of regain the numbers. So you can see here they do get a slight spill, at least enough that they're closing those inside gaps, and the, the, the running back tries to fit it through that gap, um, even though they kind of spill the first one, they box the second one. So there is a gap there. Thankfully, it kind of closed enough that he bubbled out, and then it's forced down to the free safety to, to, to chase him down. So um, it's a good play call against this front because you know it's a two-on-two two right here. Georgia doesn't do a great job spilling it. If they were at least to spill it, he'd at least have to come out a little bit more wide and just gives it just an extra time for this guy to get closer to the ball, which is what we obviously want. Chase him down, get on the hip, make the play. Let's look at it from the butt shot. So you can see what we call six technique here. He's inside of the tight end. This is an over front to the tight end. So you can see they chip up, double team here, work to the backside. They crunch down the nose. They leave this back in free. He's basically thinking it could be Jed out the back door, so he's got to sit and and play the cutback or the quarterback or the you know or the Jet. And now you you've sealed down that that defensive end. Here's your pullers taking out one guy, and you can see those new gaps that are created here. He's a little tight here, here, and here. So what we need to do is spill some of these gaps to make the ball bounce to the outside. You can see he almost gets through that gap because the, the corner boxes it. The linebacker is at least trying to hug tight enough. He's still a little, you know, I'd like to see him a little bit more tighter there and fill that gap. And either he, you know, spills this block or, you know, if you're hugging it tight enough, sometimes um, as you're scraping, if you're tight, a lot of times when that guard or that tackle comes around the corner, he doesn't really see you. You slip underneath him um, and – and make him go to another guy. Now you've got a, a free attacker there. But close down gaps, get it to the outside, and, and let your, your safeties, your fast kids, chase it down. Play one more time full speed. All right, this next play, we're going to see a, a, another gap scheme, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues you might face when you run a 4-2-5, and that is especially when you come up against balanced formations like this ace pistol. Um, you have issues where you talk about you're going to be either manned up somewhere or you're going to be on a soft edge. And it, it works a little you know, works a little bit better when the ball's on the hash. Um, a lot of times, and TCU does this very well in their 4-2-5, when they get a balanced set like this, you're normally going to see more of a 4-1 box. You'll have this guy bump out a little bit more, and now you're playing the overhang on both sides. Um, whereas, you know, into the boundary, you're okay because that, that, that space isn't as bad. Um, you know, if the ball was more in the middle of the field, you'd have, you know, your nickel there, your two linebackers here, inside linebackers here, you know, and you'd have kind of this open gap where you'd either have to screw down this safety uh, or, you know, play quarters where he's flat-footed and, and you're, you're probably going to give up something short, which is fine. You don't, you're okay with giving up something short, but it's something to consider when you play the 4 5 is when you're up against balanced formations, you, you usually have to change your structure and either go to a 4-1 um, or, you know, screw down and play a little bit of man on one side and still be three over two on the other side. So here we're going to look at, uh, again, more motion, which gets back to more of a trips looks. And now that safety from the front side screws down. You have a roll from the back side. You're manned up usually on this solo on the bottom. Um, but we what they do is they use they're using this – um, using this uh, motion guy as one of the pullers. And so it's it's kind of a, a counter scheme in a way. And the way you kind of know what's counter and what's, uh, what's power to me is, is who's the one kicking out the end. So if the guard kicks the end and this guy is kind of the wrapper um, inside or outside, um, that's usually um, counter. If you have somebody that's different, cut the end and this guy wraps and the guard wraps and that's usually power. Um, a lot of times you'll see with an H back here, they'll use him to kick it out. They'll come down to the backside and he'll scrape up underneath. Um, so the way you kind of know power, it doesn't always have to be one of those step that doesn't necessarily make the counter. What makes the counter is who's, who's going to be the one kicking out the end. So it's a counter play here. 
like again, this is what I talked about in the first uh, video about um, when scraping baggers, if they hug the pile and they're tight, a lot of times they can come underneath um, underneath the pole. Because what you should get here is we're going to kick this end out. He's wrapping for the next stretch, which should be the scraping backer. And now it's bumped to the outside, manned up, manned up. Now it's one-on-one -on -one between the safety and the running back. The problem is the, the backer does a great job of hugging the pile tight and we'll show you here in a butt shot in just a second you can see he's hugging it tight enough that he doesn't get chipped because what they're doing is trying to chip to that backside backer he comes underneath it enough the end does a good job of spilling it gives up that there's no gap in the inside so either he's got to bounce it wide or cut back through here and we'll talk about the cutback in just a second um and you can tell that that the uh kind of the Y off guy when he, when he comes in motion he kind of sees oh I didn't catch the guy I'm looking for um good scrape from the linebacker and good vision because you see what appears to be an open a gap and so get into a lot of discussion of um how you want to play a nose and typically on a block back you'll have a lot of guys say cross the center's face and now we're going to add another guy to the front side of the play um, but what you then have to account for is that backside backer then has got to fill that inside hole if he's staying outside. Um, and But what happens here is at least the nose stays um, stays pressed out enough that, that he's keeping his gap contained. And then even though it looks like an open gap and the might, you know, the wheel backer scrapes over the top, we got to have somebody in this gap so he remains one arm free and is able to make the tackle. We got it one more time, full speed, and then we'll go to butt shot. So there you see a good spill by the DN. Closes that gap. The backer scraping. Um, probably want that that backer when he does scrape, even though I like how tight he is to the pile. Would like to see him be a little bit more outside the D end because um, that's typically where the play is going to go. If he spills it correctly, that ball is usually going to bounce. So him coming inside, you're kind of getting two guys in a gap right there, um, and then you're kind of relying on this guy to scrape over the top. And and they obviously have an extra puller that can pick him up. But a good job from from the nose here, 95 to to press out his shade, keep his arm free. And then makes a tackle uh, on the cutback. And this next play is the same formation we just saw, and kind of telling you a little bit about the the, the structure of, of a four-two-five defense. Whenever you get more balanced formation, and this would be a little bit more obvious if the ball is in the middle of the field, um, but you can see more of a four-one box. And the reason why you do that now is you can bump out your wheel backer and now you're three over two versus this side and you're three over two versus this side. Um, and you can make a little bit more balance versus the pass and stop a little bit more of the quick game stuff. Leaving a 4-1 box, knowing that you're going to have to add guys into the box against the run. Um, but what Georgia does here is it changes their front a little bit. So they're running what's now called a G defense. So um, a couple of different things when you run a four down, you have some things you have to consider where you want to put your three and then um, how you're going to control the bubble. So the bubble is typically talked about between a five technique and a shaded nose. Um, what a G defense does is it moves the shaded nose over to an inside eye of the guard, and it changes up blocking schemes a lot, but it also moves the bubble. So if we were in a shade defense, the bubble is here. Um, now that we're in a G defense, now the bubble is, is, is in the middle of the field. It just changes it up because what defenses or what offenses want to do when you're running that four down is, is they're going to always usually want to attack bubbles. And so moving that bubble around, changing where you put the, the three tech um, to the back away from the back to the field, to the boundary, um, is manipulating what, um, the, that kind of moving that target of what the offense is trying to do. And if you're going to stop the run, you've got to control the, the bubble. So here we're going to go back to the wide shot and show you a little bit of, of what we're looking at here. We have, again, another guard, uh, counter scheme. Same thing as last time, except for now they're running it to the G side. And you get kind of the same result. This, this defensive end up top does a great job of he gets a down block. He gets hands on him and then spills the puller. And once again, we get a good scrape from, from, the, run, uh, from the linebacker enough that he comes underneath 
um, that puller, which is where you want him. The only problem we have here is that he stops in the hole. Um, you know, teaching linebackers, we want to teach them to get to heel line. So get to heel line. So getting the heel line would put him about um, be at the 44, the 43. And you can see that that's where the ball, that's where he's going to have the best chance of getting to the ball. If he stops short in the hole, gives this guy a chance to come back and block him. Um, and even if this guy is not there, if you stop short of the hole, you're giving the guy a two-way option. Um, if you get to the heel line, you're minimizing where the running back can go. So here you see we come underneath. He bubbles it out because he doesn't get to heel line. He's able to get sealed by that um, the Y off guy that kind of comes back to the inside and seals him off. Um, don't get a great scrape out of the backside backer. Um, the one thing about um, this backside backer is he's going to be responsible for the cutback here. So he's trying to stay behind the ball. And the DN does a good job of getting hands on this tackle because what he's trying to do is come to this backside, getting hands on him, shoving him down inside, gives enough of an opportunity for this backer to get over the top of him, which he does. The only problem now is now he's got to get back down, you know, towards the line of scrimmage. You can see he gets a little bit lateral, and that just gives a chance for the ball carrier to not only gain yards, but he's starting to lose leverage on him. So he needs to stay on the back hip. He's going laterally, he gets over the top, and now he's given that cutback lane um, available. Now he makes the play, but, you know, a guy can break a tackle easy like that. Um, you want to stay on his back hip and just continue to push him out uh, and allow that safety to come down and, and get on the hip. But because he's getting laterally, he almost runs into the safety, uh, and, and now you're just kind of you're chasing the same jersey. And the angles aren't good. Let's look at it from the butt shot again. There's the Jeep defense. You can see 13, the defensive end, does a good job of trying to get hands on him. The G, G guy does a great job of holding his shade enough. It makes the makes the tackle have to give him a little bit of a shove and gives that backside backer a chance to get over the top. They run an in stunt, um, tackle stunt from the backside. You see the tackle goes first and wraps up underneath. There's your cutback. Safety would play the outside on the backside there. There's your spill. You can see there's the gap. If you hug it tight, if 32 hugs that tight and then gets all the way through, he makes that tackle. So he should expect contact, get through right there, make contact, and, and that's a negative, you know, negative yard uh, gain instead of uh, he gets outside, you know, cuts back inside and gets about five or six. One more time quick. This next set is, again, an 11 personnel, kind of more of a Y off, so a Yo Twin Strong. Um, but looking at this alignment, I talked a little bit about so one of my earlier videos about his alignment can kind of dictate what what you get. When he's a little bit tighter, you tend to get either, you know, zone down where he's kind of the, the guy that's there for the bend back of the zone, or you should get some type of counter or gap scheme this way. Um, when he's off and a little bit more back, you tend to either get – when the back is away, you tend to get some type of split zone. When the back is two, you tend to get some type of counter OI. Um, here you get more of kind of a wham scheme where he's going to come inside and be kind of the ISO guy. And so Georgia lines up, and they're playing a little bit around with their front. So now they're they're, they're going two A gaps with their big DTs. They're, they're Mike and, and uh, Will are going to be 30 backers, so they're going to be B gap guys and your ends are outside. So it's kind of a very balanced 4-2 uh, set right here. Um, but at the last second, they slide over into the G defense to the to the Y off. And again, they get um, they get kind of a wham play where the, the Y off guy becomes an insert. Um, this is an RPO. So what tends to happen is you, you get into some issues when you talk about um, what kind of coverages you can call. When you have twins, two receivers on a side, and the splits are a little bit smaller, you can call, um, you can call, you know, some type of halves look. Um, you can play some type of bell quarters look with a, you know, kind of playing the flat there. Um, you can play um, cover three where you roll here, you rob here, um, you know, you bell there, um, send him. There's a bunch of different things you can do when 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 you've got twins with small splits. When the split's a little bit bigger, like a pro set, 
um, or even if it's twins and the guy's inside the hash and the guy's way outside the numbers up here, um, running running halves is is a little bit harder. You tend to want to either go man or, or quarter. So here they're going to play a little bit of a man scheme. They're going to press up their quarters. You see they're pressing up both corners, um, but they're going to stay pressed down below. They're going to kind of bail uh, on the snap with the one up top. So they're playing. They're, they're actually going to roll cover three to the weak side. But what do you get? This is an RPO. So what you're looking at here is um, now it's probably what we would call a ram check. So now you're going to man up. So now we're man on man. And now he's eyeing um, he's eyeing the Y off guy, the tight end, um, man to man. If he sees him block, he's going to go ahead and insert. So now the, um, the the RPO, instead of being on a conflicted backer, is now on a, on a, on a safety. Um, and so looking at the safety, he sees – his guy go down inside the block. He's going to come help fit, be the extra one guy into the box. But now he's opened up, obviously, a deep throwing lane. And when you're running man, you run in situations where, man, it's just like in basketball, you can deny passing lanes. You don't give up a lot of, of passes. Um, but when you do, it's typically big. It's typically going to hurt you for a lot of yards. When you play zone, typically you're going to give up more passes, but they're going to be a little bit softer. Shut throws are going to be a little bit shorter. You've got help over the top. So when you do give up um, quite a few in zone, it's going to be for shorter yardage. So you kind of got to pick your poison. Again, it depends on the matchup. But here you can see they're read, reading that 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 um, boundary safety here. Once he inserts, it's a pull, throw the fade. And obviously when they're rolling weak, that's a long stretch for that backside safety to get there. He gets close. But the problem with a man matchup is now you're, you're beat. You see the corners holding the arm, gets a gets a flag. Even though they make the catch, they get the penalty. Um, and so you're going to have issues there when you're playing man. So looking at the front, you see the Georgia slides at the last second. The issue you get uh, into when sometimes you slide at the last second is you're not able to get penetration like you want. Um, you're not quite set, so you're just not able to get that that forward momentum that you need. And tend to, you tend to kind of be a soft target at that point. Um, here you can see they double, double, open up. Here comes the ISO, so we need to fill, and we probably need to fill there. But obviously it's an RPO. They're reading the safety. Um, they do try to scrape inside, but that chip up um, kind of seals him off. There could be a nice little lane right there if they don't throw the RPO. But you can see in the RPO, you see how the corners beat. You know, instead of giving up a, uh, you know, a, a big, big play, give up 15, uh, live to fight another day. All right, here we have a trip set. We get motion from the inside receiver. Going to get a zone replay. So you're going to read this bottom side end right here. Um, this tackle does a good job. We get an instant, so he comes underneath. Uh, and instead of just squeezing him down, because what he's trying to do is come underneath and get that backer. Um, but he sees the DN cross face, so he then steps outside, arcs around him goes to get the backer and you have the uh, kind of the slice guy who's really kind of your Y off guy who's playing that inside receiver. Um, he now becomes kind of your lead blocker going to get the safety. And because it's trips, you're tend you're tending to get a solo on the backside. So, you know, you're manned up here and typically sometimes they'll roll that safety and now they're going to roll him back because you're getting a motion. Um, so you should be able to isolate him, block him, block him read him we're going to chip up to this backer and now we're we're in good numbers for the offense um and what happens here is you can see the the the, the wheel side backer does a good job of getting around the, the tackle and not because you as a linebacker you never want to get you know chest to chest with with one of the the o linemen you're going to lose that battle but what what do we really want to see here is is him come outside because we've got that gap covered he came inside so now i need to be outside and on you know outside of this block underneath this block because now we have this field corner is going to fight to, to set his edge and now we're back to being gapped up what happens when you come underneath is now you've got to win because now you've given up now there's there's a gap right there um so when you come underneath you've got to win and if nothing else keep pushing him to the sideline get on the hip push 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 him pushing giving your other guys a chance to fix the fits on on the back end it's a good stump by the end up top or into the boundary comes underneath it's almost more of an influence block from that tackle so he's trying to get him to come down 
and arc around him. Here comes the slice. Dean does a good job of sitting and trying to get on the hip of the quarterback. And with that linebacker, again, we really wanted to come to the outside there. Because I'm inside, I need to be outside. If nothing else, you could almost spill that block too, and now you have your, your extra hitter there. But even if you come under that block, now we're still gapped up. We have Dean in this gap. Backer should be in this gap. Safety should fill this gap. But athleticism, D1 kids are able to, to kind of – effort can kind of carry over on some mistakes. One more time, full speed. Get on the hip, chase him to the sidelines. Thankfully, it's not much of a dual threat. All right, this isn't a run play, but I want to talk a little bit about D-line stunts and how you can attack pass protection. So here we see with the trip set, you're going to have to express that mic out. Now you have more of a 4-1 box. Two over one here, and you're going to be four over three on the upside, so you're good on the pass. Um, the one thing about um, pass protection, and, and before we get to that, I'll really talk about what pistol set can be tough because a lot of times with four down teams, you're trying to set your three to either the back or, or you know to one of the directions, and usually what pistol teams will do is they'll motion their back down. Once you set your front, they'll motion him down and try to get you know where they can get an advantageous advantage either you know to your bubble or to your three depending on what the play is and then a lot of times you know defense have to slide their front and when they slide that then the snap and then you're you're not ready to, to kind of get penetration so um can be a, a game in and of in and of itself when you're four down team but talking about pass um protection and how you get guys to the point of attack without sending everybody and being safe on the back end is um stunning so here we're going to see uh, a half slide from, from Baylor. So we're going to get – he's going to basically be your one-man guy, and then now everybody else is sliding to their inside, to their left gap. Um, and with stunting, um, typically stunts can um, can be picked up by, by slides, but a lot of times if, if, if you can get the right stunt and, and you can kind of catch him in the crease because right now we know the crease is in between this guard and tackle. And so they run uh, – what essentially is um, an in stun on this on this side and a tackle stunt. So you're going to get the tackle first in loops around. On this one, we run uh, an in stun. So he comes underneath, step, and then come around the back. We used to call this train. It's kind of one word for, you know, running an in stun on one side and a tackle stun on the other. But because you have the, the looping, since he's trying to play man, he sees him come inside. He's going to kind of spin, and now it really essentially becomes full slide. And now that loop around the back, you kind of put him in, in a bind of, do I stay on him and then let that loop come free? Or do I let go of him, go to the loop? Because that was my original kind of gap. And now that, that end that came underneath is free. And that's kind of what happens here. He sees the looping around the tackle. So he comes off that end and gives that end up. Just enough to put a little bit of, of pressure, even though we don't, you know, they don't get the sack here. Just that pressure pushes the ball a little bit high. The follow-through is not the same. Can't step forward like you would normally follow through, so the ball's a little high here. And then coverage is good. Um, this guy plays great off coverage right here, and off coverage is playing your zone, not not getting sucked into chasing a man and open up something behind. Um, just playing good off coverage is reading the quarterback. He gets to his zone. He's not going to jump something early and get up something behind. He's reading the quarterback, sees where the ball is thrown, drives on it, and kind of makes it to where now the the catch he you know the receiver's kind of scared he's going to get hit coming over the middle. Make a mistake here, and when when you're playing zone, what you, what you usually don't want to have to do is somebody cross your face. You at least want to get hands on them when they do that. Lets them come back inside, and now you've got that gap. But because we're playing good off coverage here, he can get pressure on that receiver. Ball's thrown a little bit high. He tips it up. He can't go after it because he's got the guy at his face, and safety comes off make a pick, get off the field, good defense right there. Let's play one more time, full speed. And I'll show you from the butt shots. So you can see some of the stunning. Get in his face, push the ball high, get the ball tipped in the air, make a play on it. So here we can see motion down the back.
essentially what looks like a full slide only because he's coming under with a five man slide typically they're gonna they're gonna half slide this so they'll kick out take you know they'll kick out towards the bubble and then push back on everything towards a three tech because you come under now you can see splitting that crease right there now the tackle wraps around the top and now you've got essentially a two on one so he's either got to keep collapsing him down and he's free or come off chip him and now he's free to come underneath and that's what the tackle decides to do is is pull back off and, and take that d tackle that's coming from the inside and now you have a dn in his face pushes the ball high make the turnover all right here's a great play quick game that baylor throws um georgia does a great job defending it um, they press up number one and i like that the corner's fighting to the outside he's not trying to get inside because if he now knows if he comes in if i get inside now he's got to come to the outside so I'm already outside, stick my edge, hold it, hold the edge, let the safety come inside, and a good job of, of trying to stay on the hip there. Um, the other thing that I saw that I like is, is watch this uh, place ID in right here. Shuffles down the line, head whip as soon as the ball is out, um, down the line chasing the hip. Right, this isn't run fits, but I do want to add in some coverage stuff. I just I like coverage, especially when you're talking about trips, because you always have – some interesting things going on defensively when you have trips. You have to make a decision about what you want to do to the single side and then what you want to do to the trip side. A lot of teams will solo up this backside, and that allows the safety to poach across, and he'll take three post or three vertical, um, and you can do a few different things. You can bracket three with, with your, your mic and your backside safety, and now you're playing three over two on the front side, whatever coverage you want, quarters, um, you know, cover three, robber, just there are a bunch of different things you can do. Um, you could even technically play a cover two type uh, scenario with, with a robber, um, just a lot of variations you do. But what Georgia plays is is what we call special coverage, and that it's kind of playing on the law of averages, and especially it holds true in high school, and that is instead of solo in the backside where typically – um, if you have a, an X receiver back there, typically it's, it's you know, in high school, that's where your your guy is. It's an easier throw into the boundary to that side. If you're going to throw a vert, typically teams know that they're solo this up. Well, in solo now, or sorry, in special coverage, you flip that solo, and now you're soloing up number one. Because in, in high school, you don't get a lot of, of passes deep to number one out of a trip set. So you can solo him up. It's very much like an X out concept. And now – you're really playing just a, a, you know, two here and one here. And so now you can play two over one on the backside if that matchup isn't good for you. Um, and then what, what solo or what special coverage does now is plays cover two with these three against those two. So you, you should have an X out here. He's going to play, you know, cover two. So if it's vert and out, you know, that, sand, that star is now essentially the corner. He'll back out, take two, safety will roll over the top of three. He's going to play hook to curl, and that leaves you options to do. You can play, you know, a robber coverage. You can roll to it. You can play two man. Um, you can play quarters on the backside. Uh, a lot of things you can do. I, I, I like special coverage as, as an option here. So you can see Baylor's throwing a flood concept. And I like that the, they play it. So you can see it's a two read concept against three and two. And if we look at – Georgia's just trying to get um, – some. I, I like the uh, secondary. This is what we do with, with our guys too. We'll secondary pass rush with a linebacker, so we'll vacate a zone. Here you see the wheel linebacker joins the rush. Doesn't make the tackle, uh, but at least gives pressure on him to make a bad throw. All right, here Baylor goes yo, twin strong, puts the passing strength into the boundary, which can give issues before two teams because now you put that star into the boundary. You've kind of gotten a little bit of, of a, a loose edge here, especially with this Y off. Um, you know, you're with with this, you could give up the seam, but they're going to run a, a jet power read um, with the motion. At least, you know, Georgia gets a chance to you know, kind of nail down this this safety, screw him down, um, and they're going to read this defensive end here. So it's going to be down block power read. We see the quarterback shuffling, looking for. Um, that DN, if the DN goes upfield, he keeps and comes underneath with the power pull. If the DN stays flat, he gives it to the running back, and now you've got one, two, three. You've got the numbers, and so you need somebody defensively to make a play here. 
And what happens is the safety up top does a great job of denting this. So he's going to get on the outside, you know, and basically box it in, send it back inside and say what, you know, what could be a bad situation when, you know, everybody is numbers are, are not good for the defense. It's a good job by the defensive end getting down the line as well. Once he sees it, it's handed off. He gets down the line, chase the hip though. He over, otherwise you overrun it. But typically what we want in, in a 4-2 is uh, we want your inside guys to spill. So we want interior guys to spill, get it to the outside. We want exterior guys to clean it up or box it back in. And so that's what you get here, and that's how you can kind of combat when, when numbers aren't on your side. So spill it, make him go. You know, he's, he's now got one – he's got two options. He either he cuts back inside where he knows you've got pressure or you bubble it out even wider – and at least now you're given a chance for the guys to get there. Um, obviously here, exterior guys, we want them to box it in, send it back inside uh, where you've got numbers coming to help. All right, here we got Baylor and 10 personnel doubles. And one of the things that you can do to attack a 4-2 defense is run away from the overhang. So there's always going to be an overhang from the star to some side of the field. Typically it's to the field or at least to the passing strength. Here we see the passing strength is to this side. This is the trip side um, due to the back on the side. Um, so you have your overhang here, so you want to run away um, from this overhang. Baylor does a good job here. They they switch the back, which now kind of gives the illusion that you're running into the overhang, and you can see that the star goes from inside leverage now to outside leverage because there isn't a, necessarily a threat coming up the seam now. And so um, kind of two different things here. They're running speed option, which is going to be based off of they're reading the D end. And typically in speed option, you're going to block, block, read him make him wrong and then it's one-on-one -on -one with with the backside safety um and it's kind of two issues here either a um i, I believe to me it appears that uh, george is calling a will plug here so they're they're bringing a will inside um and what happens with that and and that's kind of an issue you can face when you're playing against option football because that's you know you're, you've got option responsibilities here now so you have um Somebody's got to take the quarterback. Somebody's got to take the pitch. Well, when you typically when you blitz, you can kind of muck up your option rules because he's getting a down block. The DN's getting a down block, so he's kind of taught to squeeze or at least sit. But now you're trying to plug it. So they, essentially, you've got two guys chasing the same jersey, and now uh, we're giving up that edge. You can see he's going to crack back, and now he releases up to the top. So if these guys can't. You know, if he can't get to now that pitch, you've got an issue where now Baylor's got numbers on the safety and the corner, um, and, you know, bad things can happen in that situation. So if if this if this wasn't a blitz, and let's say it's just kid, you know, making a wrong read, we never want to chase the same jersey. What should happen is down block, just like we talked about a lot on this channel, squeeze, exchange, there's your quarterback guy, there's your pitch guy, that way the quarterback keeps it. The DN you know, has him there. If he pitches it, now you've got that that will backer who's going to get on the hip now, and then you allow this guy to fit um, wherever um, he ends up fitting based on how many receivers are out there. You can see, make a switch, speed option the end. The end does do a good job of sitting, being patient, and then once the pitch occurs, get right flat down the line. Um, and I will say the will does a good job because what you don't want to have happen here is once that pitch occurs, you don't want to have both of these guys going to the hip because you're chasing, again, chasing the same jersey. We don't want to do that. So he should be flat down the line. He should be taking um, a different angle. Or in, in a perfect world, it really should be taking an angle at the hip, banana down the line. One more time here, and I'll actually go to the butt shot. You can see, switch the back. You see when, when two guys are both down, you're going to give up number there. But good effort by that DN. It's a great, great job being athletic. Shuffle, shuffle, get down the line, pursue the football, make a good play. All right here, Baylor comes out in an empty set. Um, and typically what you're going to do is either go man for your cross or, or some type of man to both sides. What you tend to see in an empty set is running back somewhere. And typically he's either that, that inside of two and you're going to get your three-by-one concepts being thrown, 
or he's number three, and you're going to get your two by two concepts thrown. Baylor actually puts him out here at number one, and uh, Georgia does a good job of recognizing that that is the running back. So they bump out a, a linebacker, which the matchup isn't terrible if it's you know coverage, and you typically won't expect some type of deep route from a running back as a number one receiver. That way, when they do motion him back in, and you can see they've leveraged them out now. They put trips into the boundary. Star's got to be up to that end of the boundary as well. They motion back to your 10 personnel set, and now just like we looked at last play where you have um, you know, your overhang to the boundary, you're giving up, uh, giving up some space out here, and you can tell now they've got to make an adjustment. They're going to go man. And they're gonna Baylor's gonna run a mesh concept, and the problem with man now is now you've got to have uh, eyes on the back. So if you're getting two in cuts from the receivers, you're gonna have issue with um, that mesh where the back releases, trying to get through that mess to get to the back, and that's what happens here when they do run mesh. They send a, a plug from the outside, and then he just over pursues it. So you can tell as soon as they in cut here he's got to get through this trash to get to maintain leverage on that back and he does a good job of getting through his angle is good everything's good except for he's trying to get a little over the top and once you get over the top that's what you want that's what you face what you want to do is you're working that hip so as he comes you're just working about a yard behind that hip that way you're only giving him the option to continue to run to the sidelines and not cut back so if he's a yard behind there if he stops, you're literally going to run into him uh, instead of if you're over the top, he cuts back, then obviously that's what happens here. We get another block. It's a great job by this uh, backside safety who's playing kind of a man-free position, sees it, gets on his horse, and is on the hip. And a good job right there. The only issue I think I saw too was, um, you know, he's got a – either pick this side or this side, one of the two, and help him out. Because if he goes here, he's not going to go underneath. Really, if he's underneath shade, he's got to come over the top. But what you get is um, he kind of now peeks back inside, and now he, you know, because he's not moving as fast as the other guy, as he starts to get on the hip, he's got to take a little bit more of a drastic angle because the speed is very different, and now he almost cuts off. This guy, so a lot of times angles are important, so you're not cutting off guys that are pursuing from the top end. Just gonna see if we can get a good shot of um, once the play occurs, kind of the leverage that that linebacker has. So you can see right there, he's a little over the top. What he needs to be is about a yard behind him, and that gives him enough, um, especially a running back like that, makes a good move, um, and he's up the gate. All right, here we get a little bit of a unique pressure. This is third and long. Uh, UG is in their kind of nickel package here, and they've got really kind of their three safety look. Um, and you can see the three down linemen here. There's their linebackers, and then kind of three safeties and two corners. So it's kind of their mint package, uh, but the line is adjusted just slightly because uh, normally their mint package would be kind of more of a tight look. Uh, but you can see here we, they know it's third and long, so they anticipating a, a – pass and what they've gotten from Baylor so far is um, these four will slide to that side um, and they'll play man so it's kind of basically a half slide some people call this a full slide because of how they played this um, but to me it's, it's a half slide um, and then that that running backs looking to pick up either either edge of this block right here depending on where they get pressure and what what UG does is, is smart here they're gonna basically um, weak slant everybody really long stick it because he's trying to get from a three all the way to the backside a gap he's going to be outside contained here and then now they're going to be able to bring two off the edge and one from deep he kind of rolls up um, during the cadence and this is actually right here this is obviously their y off guy a little bit bigger of a guy and so now um that he's manned up on him he sees him flow inside eyes go inside now the back the Running back is forced to pick up the outside, and now it's two on one. And obviously, um, he can't get both, um, and they're able to get this pressure to hit home. It's a good play call on this third and long. Bring pressure. Now, obviously, all, almost gets it out to, to the wise in the flat. Um, and most likely, because they're playing man down here, what's likely supposed to happen is it's this responsibility here manned up right here since they're bringing pressure here here they're going to man this guy up to this um 
well, since he would be the, the Mike backer. Um, but I think he, I think he kind of sees the way that this Y off blocks. I think he kind of gives the impression it's more of a seven man protection instead of a six. So I think they trigger, you can see he opens up, he's looking, sees the block and then joins instead of going to pick up his man. Uh, so it does allow that Y off to leak into the flats a little bit, but, um, you know, pressure it can tend to cover up mistakes if it hits home. Um, again, didn't, don't get the sack, but do get, um, do get kind of a wild throw, and at least the ball is not in a situation where he's up and can catch it and run. Um, they get kind of lucky there, but I like the the pressure design. Here's another stunt pressure that I really like that uh, Georgia does. You're going to get a shallow uh, cross concept out of Baylor, um, you know, standard trips. Uh, what you get here is you see that they're more in that 4-2. Um, There's the, the star outside. He's playing inside here. What you'll get is – um, Mike's going to walk up and he's going to hit that, uh, what would call what I'd call the weak side. Cause I call it based off the back, the weak side, a, um, you're going to get him pressed up. Here's the outside contain looping back to the weak side. A, um, he's going to press contain here and then he's got the back. It's going to look like they're running the stun inside, but you can see he's really just following the back. Cause when he leaks out, he comes back out and catches it. almost get to it that shallow concept is pretty hard to to cover when you're in man if you don't uh get hands on them which is why they're running that in in cut stuff because they've been running a lot of man kind of playing two man um they've been playing this a few few plays uh, prior so good call against uh, man covers and shallow routes are hard to cover especially when they get inside of you you watch it from the, the butt side And see him trying to call out protection. You can see that the line feels the protection. Um, what they do is is combo it, so they're gonna man, they're gonna fan fan here, and then they're just gonna uh, and slide that way, and then fill fill this inside with the with the back. Good job. Um, you know, I'd like to see the the Mike continue to work to the outside because I think I think if he continues to work to the outside because they've decided to um, to slide it, um, you know, if he's locked on there, he should loop back and, and be free um, here. Um, but doesn't doesn't happen because you see the back is kind of there. It's really kind of a hesitation. Check check check. Then release. I think he get. I think he gets clear. You can see the eleven gets kind of caught up with with the mic um, because he's expecting the mic to be there. He's going to come there uh, when the mic kind of shows up uh, in his gap. It makes it a little bit tougher for him. So that I think that little bit of hesitation there causes him not to quite get to that throw. Um, so just something something you really got to work on uh, with your athletes is. is Trusting that the, the blitz is going to work, stay in your gap. You're already there. Stay in that shoulder. Stay in that shoulder. Now you've cut off this guy from being able to get this loop um, covered. All the only way they cover it up is if they send in the mic, and now you're manned up here. So hopefully you get you know man 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 man. Somebody beats their man protection, um, and you get somebody to the quarterback. All right, this clip is a little bit more of just kind of uh, you know liking the offense here. Um, and we saw this formation earlier. Uh, Yo Twin strong into the boundary where they ran the jet read. And here they're going to run the jet read pop pass. Um, and so you can see the stars here. Now, once we go in motion, backers have to bump. And now he kind of becomes the de facto will. He slides out and becomes the de facto uh, star. Um, and with the will, now you've got a conflict there because he's got B gap for the run. Um, and he's got to at least honor that cutback because even if, you know, the quarterback keeps it, he could very well cut back um, into that gap. And so that hesitation enough gives this glance route just enough time to get in behind it because uh, you got that safety kind of rolling to what would be the trip side now with the motion. And there's just enough room to sneak it in. So it's a great play design um, based off what um, they've already seen the jet motion um, with the power set up the same exact way. And now they've got a companion play off of it. Um, you know, and then the star actually does a pretty decent job. He almost does 
um, sniffs it out. He doesn't overcommit too much. Um, I mean, that's just a good throw, good route. Um, I think if he skinnies it up a little bit more on this route, I think he could um, potentially break it free. But uh, good play design um, based off of what they want to see. All right, going to show you another good uh, offensive play. I swear sometimes I should be an offensive um, guy and move over to the dark side now that, that I've, I've coached defense long enough. But uh, this is a great play because what you get typically out of this formation, again, it's it's Yo Twin strong, but now you can see the passing strength is into the field. Um, so you have that star over there. Uh, now they're going to isolate this matchup here. And typically when you have, um, whether he's a, a true tight end or he's off, you're pretty much going to treat it the same. You're usually not going to play some type of quarters or, or halves to this. You're usually going to man it up so you'll get man. Um, he'll sit at about 8 to 10, and he's going to man up that Y. So when he sees um, what is what, what I call kind of the wham play, it's an ISO play from when your Y off kind of comes back inside. Um, he sees the block. He should trigger, and now you leave one-on-one -on -one matchup, makes a great move, gets vertical. Um, it's a good play design here. You see that just enough of hesitation by that safety trying to insert opens up that window. Good move from uh, wide receiver. Uh, looking like he's going to outside release. Gets inside on him now and then just stacks him. Good throw. But you can see eyes are on the Y. He inserts. Now he's thinking run. He sees this ISO play. He's thinking he may have to be the plus one to it because you got your inside outside guy. The cutback is on the safety right there. So that holds him up just enough where he's not able to help with this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Here's another good little uh, sim pressure that uh, UG plays. Now, guys does go to the offense. They're going to run mesh here, and against man, it's a good call. What you see is initially it's, again, a white Yo Twin Strong. It's the same formation they just showed the, the play before. Um, not sure if the tempo is going on here. It doesn't look like it because the back judge, it, it, you know, they're, they're not uh, close to the ball, so it doesn't look like tempo is happening. You see that uh, UG you know, runs a, what we call a shift call, so you're in right now. You're in an under front, even to the tight end, so a lot of times you should walk down that um, backer, but because they're going to shift it, now all of a sudden it's an over front to the tight end. Um, they're going to bring that star off the, off the field side, and now that means manned up, manned up, manned up, especially with the mesh concept. You know two is going to end cut shallow. It's going to be hard for him to get to it. And with this in cup here, um, it's going to be difficult for him them to pass it off and know that's what they need to do. But they're also you're also going to see a twist game from, from the two tackles. So you see a twist. So they're bringing five. Um, Bailey does a good job of picking it up, passing it off. They're playing man um, protection here. And they're able to pass off that twist. Um, but again, good route concept against man. You can see hard to get to that shallow. And now what should, you know, in a perfect world, they just pass this off. Um, but that's hard to do from a safety and a backer. So you get that shallow open. Um, take what you can get offensively. All right, here's the last play. And this is kind of a, a mixture of coverage. Um, read stuff and option stuff. So here you're going to get a trip snub situation. Uh you see UG runs another shift, so they go from an under now to an over to the tight end. Um, they're running the zone read concept, so there's your there's your dive and your keep. This is a triple option play just out of a modern spread offense. And then here's your pitch now to the outside. He's not a traditional wrapping guy. Um, and then talking about coverage here, again, this is more of what we call kind of a stress coverage, and what, what that kind of runs is you're going to solo up this backside um, it's very common to solo. Now you allowing this backside guy to poach. You're going to come down. And he's going to take two, uh, three out. He'll take three up, and now you're playing kind of an over under concept against one and two. Um, I just don't think he he screws down fast enough because um, you know it's hard to get to that out. Um, the way they're they're um, when it's a quick out like that, it's hard for that safety to get down on. So you can see. He's actually going to read this guy um, for the RPO. So there's the dive. Um, typically, they'd be reading him. Now, they, he came under, so it makes it a little bit different uh, for the 
typically for the the dive breed you'd have reading an outside dn right here but since he came under changes things a little bit they just go ahead and wash him down um, there's the dive now essentially he could keep it and go if he wanted to which now you'd have to have dive um, quarterback and now you either got to have one or two go to the pitch uh, whatever your coverage is doing outside but here obviously the coverage is this is your pitch guy which is hard to get to from that um, kind of top down um, makes it an easy throw for the triple option one more time fast Again, hope these videos are inform, uh, you know, informative uh, from a defense perspective. Next video, I want to put out from an office perspective. This last video gave me a great idea. kind of showed me that I've been almost looking at it more from an offense perspective, and I thought a lot about going to that uh, dark side at some point uh, in my career. But um, next video, I think I want to look at it from an office perspective. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Leave me a comment if you, if, you, if you have one. Have any questions, shoot it down there. Maybe shoot me something that you might want to see next. Um, until then, we'll get you another video soon. All right, here's the last play, and this is kind of a, a mixture of coverage, um, read stuff, and option stuff. So here you're going to get a trip snub situation. Uh, you see UG runs another shift, so they go from an under now to an over to the tight end. Um, they're running the zone read concept, so there's your there's your dive and your keep. This is a triple option play just out of a modern spread offense. And then here's your pitch now to the outside. He's not a traditional wrapping guy. Um and then talking about coverage here, again, this is more of what we call kind of a stress coverage. And what, what that kind of runs is you're going to solo up this backside. Um, it's very common to solo. Now you allowing this backside guy to poach. You're going to come down. And he's going to take two, uh, three out. He'll take three up. And now you're playing kind of an over-under concept against one and two. Um I just don't think he, he screws down fast enough because, um, you know, it's hard to get to that out. Um, the way they're, they're um, when it's a quick out like that, it's hard for that safety to get down on. So you can see he's actually going to read this guy um, for the RPO. So there's the dive. Um, typically they'd be reading him now that he came under, so it makes it a little bit different. Um, for the Typically for the, the dive read, you'd have reading an outside DN right here. But since he came under, it changes things a little bit. They just go ahead and wash him down. Um, there's the dive. Now, essentially, he could keep it and go if he wanted to, which now you'd have to have dive um, quarterback. And now you've either got to have one or two go to the pitch, uh, whatever your coverage is doing outside. But here, obviously, the coverage is this is your pitch guy, which is hard to get to from that um, kind of top down. Um, makes it an easy throw for the triple option one more time fast. Again, hope these videos are inform, uh, you know, informative uh, from a defense perspective. Next video, I, I want to put out from an office perspective. This last video gave me a great idea. Kind of showed me that I've been almost looking at it more from an offense perspective. And I thought a lot about going to that uh, dark side at some point uh, in my career. But um, next video, I think I want to look at it from an office perspective. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Leave me a comment if you, if you, if you have one. Have any questions, shoot it down there. Maybe shoot me something that you might want to see next. Um, until then, we'll get you another video soon.